Hello everyone. If you're watching this video, then more than likely you've encountered an issue with your Atari 7800 console. And that issue is whenever you're trying to insert an original 7800 or 2600 cartridge into the port on top of the console, you have issues with it fully engaging. And you can get it all the way in, but it takes a significant amount of pressure on the cartridge to do so. And then whenever you go to remove the cartridge, it's, it's also very cumbersome and it feels like whether you're inserting it or removing it, it feels like something may break. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to walk you through how you can modify that cartridge port on your 7800 to make the insertion and removal of those cartridges much easier so you don't have to worry about breaking anything. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over the console with the face down and remove the screws from the back. Once all the screws are removed, we're gonna flip the console back over and then we're gonna remove the upper part of the shell from the console. With the shell removed, we are then going to remove the internal board from the inside of the Atari 7800. With the board removed, now we need to take off the RF shielding from the board. To do that, we need to twist the metal connectors to come up through the bottom of the board and through the upper RF shielding and hold everything into place. The easiest way that I've found to do this is to use some needle nose pliers and then twist the little metal studs until you have clearance enough to remove the RF shielding. With all the metal studs twisted for clearance, you can remove the RF shielding with a little bit of persistence. If it's giving you too much of a struggle, go around and make sure that you have all the little studs so that they're straight in line with their clearance holes. Now that we have removed the upper and lower RF shielding from the board, we can access the cartridge port. You'll notice on the video that using regular pressure, it's very hard to get the cartridge all the way engaged within the port. In fact, when you look at the holes on the back of the port, the cartridge is barely engaging at all. To modify the port, we need to remove it from the board. To do this, first we need to flip the board over so that it's facing down to access the screws on the bottom of the port. You'll note that you can see tape through the holes on the bottom of the port. The tape covered the heads of the screws that's holding everything into place. You can use either a razor or a small flat-headed screwdriver to cut the tape and access the screws. Once you have access to the screws, remove both of them so that you can prepare to remove the cartridge port. To remove the cartridge port, you need to squeeze in on both of the black nubs that stick out of the back of the board and pull from the other side on the cartridge port to disengage it from the board. Now that we have the cartridge port uninstalled from the board, we're ready to make our modifications. You can tell from the video that even when we try to insert the cartridge into the port with the port uninstalled from the board, it still will not fully engage. This is because the corners of the port are not the right shape to allow the cartridge to fully engage. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our Dremel with a round sanding bit to cut into the corners of the part cartridge port and give us enough clearance for that cartridge to fully engage with the board. You can use either a vise or do like what I'm doing with your hand, but if you are using your hands, make sure that you take your time and be very careful so that the Dremel tool does not hit and potentially harm your hands.
Once you remove the material from the corners, there will be melted plastic that burrs up on the edges. To clean that up, I used a razor blade. You could also use a deburring tool or some other flat-headed screwdriver to remove that excess material. You wanted the merge. You got the merge. The highest merge in the world. DeadBunniesOfficial.com With everything removed and cleaned up, now we're ready to test fit the cartridge back into the cartridge port. You'll notice now that the cartridge fully engages in the port with no pressure at all, just like it should have initially. Now that everything has been disassembled, and all the material has been removed from the cartridge port, I recommend cleaning everything with alcohol. You should clean the inside and outside of the cartridge port with alcohol, and this includes any dirt that would have been there initially, plus once we remove the material, there's a lot of dust, as you've seen on my hands, that enters into all the little nooks and crannies of this cartridge port. Once we've cleaned our cartridge port, you should then go in and clean the board itself with alcohol, especially where the cartridge is going to make contact with the board. Once this cartridge port is installed, it's not as easy to clean it as it is right now. Once you've got everything clean, then you can go through and reassemble everything using the same steps that we used to disassemble it, only in reverse. All right, so you've seen us modify the port here for the game cartridge. We used our Dremel to cut out the corners of this thing inside, and now that we've got it back together, I wanted to show you, by using a couple of different cartridge types, how easy it goes in and comes out without having any problems. So before, whenever you would try to insert a cartridge into here, it was so tight that it would not engage all the way. It was very hard to play a game because you couldn't get it all the way in without feeling like something was gonna break. And it might have broken if, if I would have forced it down in there all the way. Also, when you try to pull it out, it was very difficult because of how tight it was. So let's just start off here. We've got a traditional 2600 game. This is combat, just a standard cartridge. So we'll put it in. Now it's got this little satisfying click at the bottom, but it's not hard to push down. And that's it. To, to pull it out, not hard, works easy. So that's what we wanted, and this is the 2600. All right, so here we go. We've got this Demon Attack game. This is for the 2600 from the Magic Company. They made a number of these games. The main thing to pay attention to here is the corners. They're a lot sharper. The plastic is thinner, but the, the corners are, are what was catching on these games because of the way that this cartridge port was made. Now we've removed that material, so it makes it better, but before it was hard to get these in and out. So we'll just put this into place. There we go, it's in. And then to pull it out, there we go. Now it is still a little bit tighter than the traditional cartridge here for the 2600, but it's just because of the way the corners are made. It still goes in and out without any issues. Before it was, it felt like something was gonna break. All right, so here's the 7800 cartridge that we're gonna test out. This is Dig Dug original cartridge, similar to 2600 cartridge, but again, I was having a very hard time getting these into this console before we made that modification. So we'll put it in, it just pops down into place, no big deal, and then we'll pull it out, comes out. Now again, it is still a little bit tighter than the 2600, but it does go in all the way where you're able to play it and you're able to take it out with, without breaking anything, and that was the main thing here. So this is a success. We were able to remove the corners, 
and be able to insert and remove the games without any major issue.